We now head into the Autobahn Northern Vault and Tools Super Hatch category and another big field of 45 cars, eventually 42 of them going to battle, incorporating Triple One Sports and Saloons classes D and E. On board with Sammy G off the line. As the lights go out, we go racing. Sammy G getting a good start, trying to find his way through rapidly. But there's two very quick golfs ahead of him. In fact, one squeezes him out down towards the kink. And there are six cars side by side heading into the kink. This is going to make for some interesting racing, particularly considering we're in dusk. And it's not going to be easy to see. Lights are ablaze on some of the cars as they start to sort things out. Mona Himan gets the drop and gets the whole shot over the two Hondas. Ian Cotwell in that magnificent Chris Davison and Michael Briggs replica having a great run there in fourth place. Uh, looks like uh, starting to sort out in the mid-pack there. Watch out for Eddie Leach. He's the front end probably of Triple One Sports and Saloons, but he's uh, fighting with Class B and C of the Super Hatch category. And great to see this little mixer of the two classes. It certainly works well at the Pekisa 200 and it's working really well here at the Motorsport Festival incorporating the uh, penultimate round of the Extreme Festival. Jonathan Detroit sneaking on the inside and finding a way through on the Autobahn car there and of course Autobahn the big sponsor of this category as Ian Cottrell has actually squeezed through on both of those Hondas and got his Opel Superboss, well Chris Davison's Opel Superboss, up into second. He's got a long way up the road to try and find Mona Himan I can tell you something, if he's there, Himan might just be able to be a very big carrot to Colonel Custard's machine. On the braking markers, look out for a maneuver coming from Hollywood as well. A welcome return to Super Hatch Racing for Marius Roberts, who's just ahead of Nick Martin, who leads out Class B. And the rest of the field starting to uh, sort things out there. That's the gap that Mona Himan's got over Cotwell to Toy. Uh, Garland having a good run as well in fourth. And right on his tail comes Marius Roberts. And a hard charging Nick Martin. Zane Fonsal is just ahead of the leading Triple One Sports and Saloon. And I actually thought it might have been Eddie Leach. It's actually not. It's Chris Smith in the 924 Porsche who's actually got the lead of Class D in uh, the Triple One Sports and Saloons. Nice to see Andre Danhauser a little bit further back there and having a good run. But uh, the front end of the field is where things are starting to eat up. Cotwell has been outgunned and he's gone to third place. Detroit's through to second. I see a uh, big battle there as well between Tyler Scott and Carl Stoltz. Stoltz in the Pretoria Toyota Runex and the Lopec uh, Opel just ahead of him. And a little bit further back there, he has one of our youngest drivers on the day. Great to see Seth Van Heerden still fighting hard and uh, Seth Van Heerden there with Alta van Veik going side by side out of Ingwe Corner. Stuart Koenig also in an incredible battle here for Class B and in fact in amongst some of the contenders out of uh, Cape Town. That of course is young Giordano Lupini who has moved up uh, from uh, the GTI Challenge down in Cape Town and has come to be part and parcel of this historic event here this weekend in the Munro Racing Golf. I'm sure he's going to be looking forward to uh, getting a, as high as he can in this category. But a great run here from the youngster nonetheless. There is the leader of Class D in Triple One Sports and Saloons. And he's been closed down by Lupini. So Lupini is actually getting onto the back end and looking for a victory here in the Triple One Sports and Saloons. Tyler Scott looking to win things out in his class. And we go on board with the uh, Lopec Opel Cadet. That sunset now gone, so it's not going to be affecting the vision anymore. And you can see the sun has gone completely behind Leokop. So it uh, shouldn't be any problem at all as we stay with him into the S's. Back to the front end of the field, and it's Detoy who's in second place with a big margin to make up on Mona Himan. Brett Garland in the Autobahn car. Then Cotwell. Behind him is Marius Roberts. Hollywood having a good return. And then a great drive here out of Nick Martin for Class B. We go on board with him in the Rex Diff and Gearbox Opel Cadet. It's not too far off the back end of those two Class A cars, so incredible drive, as I mentioned, from Nick Martin in Baby Blue. Further back through the field, things starting to heat up here in the closing stages. A good run from uh, John O'Koenig just in the background there. And you can see, oh, it's just getting real tight between Triple Ones and the Super Hatch category. Carl Stoltz closing back onto the low pick. Look at that. Oh, it's metal on metal stuff there for Tyler Scott. You can see the sparks coming off those front brake pads. So you can see just how hard those brakes have worked all race long. In fact, even Giordano Lupini, who's taken the lead of uh, Triple One Sports and Saloons. A great drive there from the youngster. And certainly uh, showing that he's got what it takes to run, not only at the front end of his class down in Cape Town, but here on the high felt as well. So only a couple of laps to go now as we go on board with Alex Marks. You can see things getting a little bit dark. And in fact, the, the GoPro here yeah, giving us a really good view of how things are going to be a bit more difficult here in the very last part of this incredible weekend's racing. Down towards Crowthorn. Craig Buerta under pressure there from John O'Koenig. And looks like on his tail, Chris Dale. Looks a much better run there from Chris Dale. Runs a little bit wide though. That's not what you want to be doing at this stage. 
Stoltz looking to get on the inside. Can he find a way through? <laughs> no, he can't. Tyler Scott's keeping him honest. It's a great little battle there. Run X versus Opel Cadet versus Opel Corsa and on their tail Apollo. So you can see the mix of cars. The Ford, speaking of cars, there's a Ford car out there as well of Robin Kruger. And she's uh, looking for an opportunity to possibly run just ahead of where she is right now as they get development done on that little Ford car. Andre Danhauser as he heads down into sunset. Oh, Seth got it all wrong. I think every fun head has been off the circuit more than four or five times this entire weekend. So Seth is definitely not going to let the family down. The top end of the field, I'm Warner Himon in the Ancro Building Projects machine. That little Mini Cooper has not put a wheel wrong here in the second race. Second place up for grabs here in Triple One Sports and Saloons, and it's still up for grabs big time as we see Smith, Vanna Peterser, and Craig Berta going at it. They're not going to catch Lupini, as you can see Sparky, Mona Hemon with uh, Metal on Metal as well. Look at those disc brakes! Lit up! That is an awesome shot! Coming out of Crocodiles, heading towards Cheetah. Two corners to go, and the Mini could take this victory. The second race of the weekend could be in the hands of that Mini Cooper driver, Mona Hemon. And he's going to just hang on to keep out Jonathan Detoy. There's no more brakes left on that car. He has worked it to the limit and passed. And I can see Jonathan Detoy is itching to sneak through, but he's just going to be found wanting. A great drive from Hemon, beating Detoy to the line in second place. And a good effort from Brett Garland to finish in third. It's going to be Nick Martin to take Class B honors in the Super Hatch category. He beats out Zane Van Sale and Shui Kunig in the Class Bs of the Super Hatch. A fantastic drive from the Monroe Golf and Giordano Lupini to win our Triple Ones. Andre Danhauser will be coming through very nicely to finish up in second place behind his teammate Tyler Scott for Class C. Himon de Toy and Brett Garland, the first in Class A. Class B going to Nick Martin ahead of Zane Fonsell and Stewie Koenig. And then Tyler Scott beat Danhauser to the line for Class C. Triple Ones, Lupini took the win over Smith and Vanna Peterser. Craig Butcher in fourth place with Robin Kruger eventually coming through to win out Class E, beating Alka van Fleda and Colin Green. We have a chat to Hollywood to find out what it was like to come back to Kailami. But it's been a long time since I've raced competitively like this and I, I want to get back and we want to go Class A. Uh, Willem kindly gave me a, a car to drive. Look, it's, it's Class B spec. We've got a hell of a lot of weight in here. We actually aren't quick enough for Class A, but this weekend was a case of how far behind are we? So we know what we need to do for next season. But besides that, just to be back at Kailami, a circuit I love, it's, oh, it's been awesome. The final round.